verifications and proofs often end up on tests, diplomas, midterms, anything like that, right? But people will get them mixed up. They'll prove when they're supposed to verify, and they verify when they're supposed to prove, or they'll like half it. They'll half verify, half proof, which is even worse, because then you're not right on either one, okay? So we're going to test it a lot to see if you guys do it exactly the way I say, okay? So a verification has to be done in a specific way. A proof has to be done in a specific way, all right? If you don't do it in that way, it's really easy to mark, because you might just have no mark right off, first, right off the bat if you get wrong, okay? So here it says, verifying trigonometric identities. So verifying, you guys have done your whole life. It's when you guys check. You know, since little, they've asked you to check your answers. When you get what X is, you plug it in and you get left side equals right side. Correct? That's a verification. That's all we're doing. So verifying makes it that that answer is true or it's not true. That's it. So when they ask you to verify, they're asking you to prove that it actually works. But it only works for whatever answer I gave you. Correct? So does that say it works for everything in the world? Every answer in the world? No, it says it works for that one answer. You verify one answer. Good for you. Right? That's all you've done. A proof, you don't actually put in any values for x, and you prove that left side equals right side by using formulas. Because you didn't put in anything for x, you've proven that that proof works for every answer. Every answer will work. Left side will equal right side because you didn't plug in an answer. So there's a difference between verification and proof. Verification verifies for one solution. Proof verifies for every solution that it will work. Because you never put a value in. You use formulas off your formula sheet to prove that left side equals the right side by the with the look, like sine x equals sine x or cos x equals cos x in the end. Okay? So we're verifying. So to verify whether an identity is true, you follow the following steps. You substitute the value in for all the variables. That's your very first step. It's very easy to mark verification because what you guys will do is you'll try and change out formulas after I choose after I show you a proof. You guys will try and substitute out formulas on your formula sheet in the very first step, and you're immediately wrong, and I give you a zero. We don't want that to be how it goes, though, because that would just be really crappy. So verification, your first step is to take whatever answer they gave you and plug it into left side, right side. Is that not how you guys have verified your whole lives? Like if you got an answer of x equals 3, you just put 3 into the left side, 3 into the right side. That was your first step, and you worked it down. Yeah? That's a verification. You've done it your whole lives. But then when we get to here, you guys try and substitute and stuff. No. Your first step is plug in the value they gave you. Yeah? Then determine the exact value of all the trig ratios. So that's where your unit circle comes in. You pull out the answer, right? And then algebraically simplify each side, <clears throat> never crossing over the equal sign. Here's a little side note about that. When verifying, never cross over the equal sign as is an electric fence, and you'll be zapped and hurt quite badly, I might add. This is no joke. I really kind of wish that if you uh, like add or subtract it across the verification, just give you like a little jolt. Like, ah, don't do that. You're great. I take a little bit of a zap to not lose one. Right? Um, and then your left side should equal your right side. So you have to have right LS equals RS in. Yeah. Enjoy LS equals RS. It is the only short form you're allowed. It is actually acceptable that LS and RS represent left side and right side in mathematics. So if you ever write LS, it is left side. If you ever write RS, it is right side. That is the only short form you're allowed. Enjoy it. Anything other than that, write a full word. Okay? So this should not be crazy to us. We have verified since we were little. I don't know, grade 7, maybe even grade 6. You guys have checked your answers, right? They've just been very basic questions, but you've checked them. That's a verification. It's the same thing. All right. Let's look at the next one. So here, let's pretend that when we solved this out, we got an answer of 60 degrees. Okay? We need to verify that 60 works. So what's our first step? Plug in the 60, right? That's what you would do if you were verifying whatever answer you got. Okay. So we're going to go secant of 60 degrees equals tan of 60 degrees. over sine of 60 degrees. So my first step is to literally fill in the 60. That should be what happens. You guys know how to verify. You've done it since you're little, right? Then the next thing we need to do is find out what all those values are. So off to the side, I find out those values because I'm going to go to my unit circle. So what is secant of 60? I'm going to help myself out over here. Go to your unit circle. Go to 60. And you're going to look at what? Sine or cos? Cos, which is x. 
What is x at 60? 1 half. So what's secant at 60? 2. Because you can flip the answers on the outside, right? So cos of 60 is a half, so secant of 60 is 2. Okay, we need two more things. We need tan of 60. What's tan of 60? Sine of 60 divided by cos of 60, right? What is sine of 60? Is it 3 over 2? I heard someone whisper it. You were right. Divided by cos of 60? 1 half. Remember when I told you when you stack fractions, if the numerators match or the denominators match, you can cancel, correct? So these cancel. And then let's go to root 3 over 1, which is root 3. And I have one more to find, sine of 60. What is sine at 60? Yeah. Now I have all those values. Can I substitute them in? Yes. So secant of 60 is 2. <coughs> equals what's tan of 60? Root 3 over 1 if you so choose. So that you actually have a stacked fraction, right? Over... What's the denominator? Root 3 over 2. Now, when canceling off the root 3s, these become what those? Whenever you cancel something off, what is that slanted line just? It's a 1. This is a 1. This is a 1. Right? So this is actually 2 equals 1 divided by a half. We agree? What is 1 divided by a half? 2. Because 1 divided by a half means 1 times the reciprocal, 2 over 1. Yeah? So it's 2 equals 2. Ls equals Rs must happen. You'll actually lose 0.5 if you don't do that. So not crazy, right? Verifications are done really terribly, just so you know. But they shouldn't be. You plug in, go off to the side, find your answers, plug those in, math. Right? Okay, example two is pi over six. Some people say, can I put in 30 degrees? Does that say 30 degrees? No. So can you put in 30 degrees? No, you're verifying pi over six. So our first step is to write that with pi over 6 in, yeah? So we get cotan pi over 6 equals cos of pi over 6 divided by sine of pi over 6. Fill it in. Try it out. So we have cotan, cotan of pi over 6 equals cos of pi over 6 divided by sine of pi over 6. What is cos of pi over 6? So 3 over 2. What is sine of pi over 6? A half. The 2's cancel and left with root 3. This is actually the same thing. Do you see that I'm dividing them over there? I kind of proved it right. So this is going to be root 3. And then this is going to be root 3 over 2 divided by a half. I often like making my division symbol a different color or a highlighter or something because then it shows that it's actually a fraction. And then these cancel and I get root 3. So some people will be like, okay, left side equals right side. If my grandma Hamill, so I'll say my grandma Hamill can't tell me that this picture is the same as this picture. You are not done. My grandma Hamill would be able to say that this, she's a lovely lady, she was a teacher in her day. She actually taught me. Root 3, root 3. Would my grandma Hamill now say that that matches? Yeah, then you can go LS equals RS. 
So unless my grandma Hamill or your grandparents who know nothing about math could say that this is equal, you can't do anything. Okay, you have to keep going. So I get people going from here and saying LS equals RS. It's like, well, obviously it's the same. Obviously it's not, because unless someone... Oh, I hit it with a point tail again. Oh, gosh. Oh, goodness. What did I do? Where did it go? Did I delete it? Oh, boy. Okay, it's back. Um, yeah. Unless you can see it, you can't write it. Okay. So let's go do this one. Cotangent squared x plus 1. So we get cotangent squared pi over 3 plus 1 equals cosecant squared pi over 3. Now some people will say to me, well, why can't I just switch cotangent squared x plus 1 with cosecant? Is that what I'm verifying? No, I'm verifying this. So I have to plug it into that. I can't change it. If you change that at all before you plug in, if your first step is to not just plug in, it's really easy to mark. You get zero. Because you didn't verify that. You verified something else. Right? So first step is plug in. Second step, figure it out. So we have cotan of pi over 3 equals cos of pi over 3 divided by sine of pi over 3. Okay, the box is back. Okay, cos pi over 3, what is it? One half. Sine of pi over three. Or three over two. Oh, I told you I was doing Oh, I pressed three. And the blue box comes up blue in my color. That's sad. <coughs> yep. Okay, and then the twos cancel and I'm left with one over root three. What do I want to do then? Rationalize. It gives me root 3 over 3. So I have root 3 over 3. What? Squared. Plus 1. Equals. Now I need cosecant of pi over 3. Cosecant of pi over 3 is what split? Sine split. What is sine at pi over 3? So 3 over 2. So cosecant is going to be 2 over root 3. And then I have to rationalize it. So I get 2 root 3 over 3. I get 2 root 3 over 3 what? Squared. Squared. Yeah? Then when we have a squared on the outside, we have to square the numerator, the top, and square the denominator, the bottom, right? The two goes to both. We want that in grade 10 exponent laws. So square root of 3 squared cancels out the square root, right? So I'm left with a 3. And then 3 squared is 9 plus 1 equals 2 squared, 4. Square root of 3 squared is times 3. <clears throat> divided by 3. Now you can either reduce the 3 over 9 to 1 third, or, and then make the 1 be 3 over 3 to add them. Or, you can leave it as it is, make the 1 be 9 over 9. Right? So we're going to get 3 over 9 plus 9 over 9 equals this is a 9. Why is no one speaking? Everyone's just looking at me with big eyes, so I know something's wrong, but no one's saying what it is. <laughs> you all just look at me like this, like, is something wrong? I'm not sure what it is, and I'm not going to speak up. I'm just going to let her try and figure it out, because we're all giving her really big eyes. But it looks like every day. Like, I know something's wrong on the board, because you all do this. And then look at each other like, am I wrong? Is she wrong? Am I wrong? All right. Then we get 12 over 9. And then here we get 12 over 9 equals 12 over 9. Do I have to reduce that? In your being, you might feel like you need to reduce that because it just seems wrong to not reduce it. But do those equal? So do I have to reduce it? No. Would my grandma Hamill say that those images are the same? Yes. 
No, because you'd still have them equal. If you reduced one side and not the other, and now the images don't match, then you would. But if you went and reduced both of them, no. To be honest, I don't know if I'd be able to leave it at 12 over 9. I think it would make me fidget, and I'd have to go put it down. But I'm just proving that 12 over 9, you can leave. I think it would bother me deeply, and I would probably have to reduce it. Yeah, which is where I would probably want. Okay. You guys try out example four and example five and example six. I just released you into the world. Actually, do example four and five. Six is a double angle. Four and five. Nope. Just wording. What am I? So we have. Please check and see if you have this. One plus tan. Three quarters, three over four, pi, just squared in there, equals secant squared, three over three pi over four. If that is not the first line on your page, you have a zero. You just earned yourself a zero. That's it. That is not your first line. I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm being honest so that you can get zero in your test. That is your first step. If that is not what you have on your page, you just get a zero out of three. It would be really easy to mark. Really sad. Really easy to mark. Okay. So, we have one plus, what's tan of three pi over four? It is sine of three pi over four divided by cos of three pi over four. It's in quadrant two, so I know it's going to be negative. What is three pi over four for sine? Root 2 over 2, what's not cos? Negative root 2 over 2. The 45s always end up at 1 or negative 1, right? So this is going to be negative 1. So I get negative 1 squared. And then secant 3 pi over 4. Secant 3 pi over 4 is what flip? Cos flip. What's cos? Yeah, so it's going to be negative 2 over root 2. And then I rationalize. And I get negative 2 root 2 over 2. Cancel, so I get negative root 2. Squared. Okay, 1 plus 1 is 2. Square the negative 1, positive 1 root 2 squared, 2. LS equals RS. Now, can I have more steps in here? Can I go 1 plus 1 and have that in there? Yes. This is, I will show you the minimum number of steps. This is minimum. You can't go from like here, first step, to 2 equals 2. Because they'll be like, I don't know how that kid did that. If they can't reason from step to step how I could, like you could do it, then you're going to not get the marks. So I can go 1 plus negative 1 squared. Okay, a kid can figure that out and put 2. Like that is legit. Like they can do that in their head. Can they go from first step to 2 equals 2? No, they probably put in their calculator and got two. That's what I would say. Okay? So it won't work. Five. One minus sine squared of 210 degrees. Equals sine of 210 degrees. Wow. Cos of 210 degrees. And when in doubt, keep going. Cotan of 210 degrees. Okay, do I have to show sine and cos off to the side, or can I just get them off my unit circle? You can just get them off your unit circle. If you want to show them off the side, you can. So 1 minus, what is y at 210? Negative a half? Yep. Squared. So sine of 210 is negative a half. Cos of 210? Negative root 3 over 2. And then we can show cotan off to the side. Cotan of 210 degrees equals cos of 210 over sine of 210. What's cos, cos of 210? Negative root 3 over 2. Sine of 210? Negative a half. The 2's cancel, so there's a negative, and I'm left with 3. If you so choose, root 3 over 1, if you like having fractions together. 
If you have fractions and you multiply, it's often easier if you do put it over one so that you don't try and put the root three to both, which is what people try and do. If you put it over one, people won't do that. If they leave it as root three, they'll try and put it to both the top and the bottom. So I just put over one. All right, so we're going to get one minus a quarter equals negative times negative is positive root three times root three is three. Two times two times one is four. And what's one minus a quarter? Three quarters. Do I have to show common denominator, or could I say if someone bakes, they might have a chance? Like they're baking a cup minus a quarter is three quarters of a cup, right? So I don't have to see the common denominator there and feel like you can do it. Now, what I personally like to do is I like to do this. I like to go um, LSRS up here to help myself out, but you can do what you want. I like putting the LS and the RS at the top so that it's the left side and the right side, kind of showing what it is. Okay? Proofs you have to show that because we don't do it with equal signs. All right. This one often gets done terribly because people um, try and find the answer in times it by two or something like that. But that's not what we we're going to do here. So we're filling it in. That's our first step. So tan of 7 pi over 6 equals 1 minus cos 7 pi over 6. Oops, 2 times, oh gosh, I'm erasing this. That's terrible. 2 times 7 pi over 6. Now, once again, you might want to put it over 1 when you're multiplying fractions so you don't try to put that 2 to both of them. And then over sine 2 over 1 times 7 pi over 6. If you want to, you can go tan 7 pi over 6 equals 1 minus cos of what? How does this reduce? To 7 pi over 3, right? And if you don't know, 7 pi over 6 times 2 is what? What's 2 ten times 2? 420. 420 as a, as a radian is 7 pi over 2. It's just two times the angle you have. That's all it is. So tan of 7 pi over 6. is sine of 7 pi over 6 divided by cos of 7 pi over 6. What is sine at 7 pi over 6? Negative, pardon? And then cos? So this is 1 over root 3, which rationalizes to? 3 over 3. Then I need 1 minus. What is cos of 7 pi over 3? <coughs> cos of 7 pi over 3. Convert it to a degree if you still choose. If that makes it easier for you. What is 7 pi over 3? 7 times 180 divided by 3. What do you get? It's 420. Because 7 pi over 6 is 210. 210 times 2 is 420, right? Like that's why we get 420. Because 7 pi over 6 is the same as 210 degrees. And I need 2 times 210 degrees, right? Just 420. Yes? Okay. So this is the same as uh, saying cos of 420 degrees, which is too big. What could I do? Subtract 360. So that's the same as cos of what? And what is cos of 60? One half. 
Did he see how he can get there on the side? So one minus a half all over sine of seven pi over three is the same as sine of 120 degrees, which is the same as sine of 60, which is the same as root three over two. Can I partially write some left and then quit writing the left side? Or do I always have to give a left side equals a right side every single time? You need a left side equals a right side every single time. So I don't care that root 3 over 3 is just going to come along for the ride. It has to come along for the ride every step. So I'm going to go root 3 over 3 on this side. <laughs> equals, what's 1 minus a half? And I can't cross these 2's off right now because this is not a full fraction up here. What's 1 minus a half? A half divided by root 3 over 2. The 2's cancel off. And I get root 3 over 3 equals 1, 1 over root 3. And people are like, that's the same. Would my grandma Hamill agree with you? No, my grandma Hamill doesn't know anything about these numbers. So do those look the same? No. So you either have to make this one be like this one or that one be like that one. One or the other. Left side has to look the same as the right side. The image has to be the same. Right? I'm going to rationalize this one. So I'm going to get 1, I'm oh, sorry, root 3. No, box. 3 over 3 equals root 3 over 3. Now would my grandma say those are the same images? Yes. LS equals RS. So those double angle identity ones, the double angles, you just take whatever the angle is and double it, and then you find the answer to that. Yeah? You have to optimize the action you're using? As long as left side equals right side? No. So it could be one over root three. Yes. Yep. As long as the images at the bottom, my grandma would say, look the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. cat and a cat for all that matters. So a little more than, you know, we don't verify cats, but whatever. <laughs>